Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. I have a project for you today making this adorable wall hanging using tissue paper foundation piecing. Now, if that's a new term to you, that was a new term to me as well. And I cannot wait to show you how fun and easy this is to make. If you've done any kind of foundation paper piecing in the past, whether it's with paper or tissue paper, you may have found that confusing and it can be confusing but I'm gonna show you with some good methodology, taking good notes of what fabrics are considered fabrics one, two, three, and four, etc. We're gonna demystify that and make this a really fun project. And this is a half day project. Now, this came from this little package here. Cindy Edgerton is the woman behind this project. And this is called the Little Bit Shorter Tall Tree. She called it that because she has another version that is taller. It's over six foot tall. This one is the 17 by 41 inch tree. It fits great in a smaller space. If you don't have a lot of available wall space, this might be a great size for you. Kits are definitely available for this. We've put together, so if you love the night scene, Cindy did her original with a white sky. It's kind of a day scene. I like the night scene for what we were going to be doing here on set, just the beautiful blue. If you love this one, be sure to pick up our kit and all of those exact fabrics will be in your kit. But let me show you what's inside here. I can't believe what Cindy was able to put inside one little package. It's a really neat uh, project in that she uses a foundation tissue paper, which makes it possible to see through the paper to your fabric. Now, this not only makes one tree, but two. She gives you two of these inside that little tiny package, two complete ones. Now, it's the quilt is assembled in different sections. Let me grab that pattern and just show you a little bit about how this will go together. And then we'll talk about everything that's on the table in front of me. As you can see from our overhead camera, there are different sections that we will be putting together and then sewing those units together to make all of that. The tissue paper comes out as one different, or one big piece, and you will cut that apart into the different sections. And it's clearly labeled, so you'll just, with scissors, just making sure you're cutting apart your various sections and you'll just kind of have a stack of tissue paper. We'll be getting to that in just a little bit, but let me show you the parts. Let me show you the tools I'll be using today to make all of this work beautifully and you'll have a nicely pieced project, which is great not only for displaying, but the fact that this has two inside, how nice for one for maybe your home and then one to give as a gift. So thank you, Cindy, for putting two of those in there. I think you've created a great gift giving opportunity by uh, having two. And let's say that you do make a mistake when you're putting yours together. You now have a second piece that you can just start again. So I am very grateful, Cindy, that uh, for people that are maybe new to this, that you've given us kind of a backup piece, or hey, if we nail it the first time, we can make a second one and give it as a gift. Uh, naturally, any project is going to take a certain amount of ingredients and components to put it together and come out with a great result. I'll be working with the 17 by 17 inch spinning mat. That's what's going to be down here to start with. I will have my six and a half by 12 and a half Credo Grids ruler. This is a new product for me. This is called Add a Quarter. It's actually been out a long time, but it's new for me. And so we'll be using that today and I'll show you why we're using that. We'll have our Kai scissors, a 28 millimeter rotary cutter is what I'll be using today. We'll be working with some small pieces and I find I have just a little bit more control and visibility with a smaller rotary cutter. I'll be using with my patchwork pins later on as we piece our sections together. Of course, we need some good quality thread. This is my confetti neutral set and I'm using a gray today. I think that's a nice um, a blender that's gonna work well with the greens and the blues and the reds that are all part of this project. So I'll be putting these aside, but this is a great um, set to buy just to have 
in your sewing studio. So when you are piecing projects, you have your lights, you have your darks, and then you have your kind of in-betweens. This is 1,000 meters of 50 weight cotton. It's fabulous. This is what I'm piecing with day in and day out today, both in the top and in the bobbin. We'll be using our gray today. So I'll put those two aside for another day. I'll also be using our sew line glue pen and I'll show you a little bit later on why we'll be using that. So let me get that off to the side and we're going to go straight into dissecting this pattern. We'll get real close up and be showing you how we'll be reading our tissue paper, how we'll be using our cuts of, of fabric and uh, we'll go to that step right now. Here's the inside of the pattern here. This particular pattern calls for four greens, some whites, she actually did a white, we used one blue for all of that, and some reds for down in the tree skirt. I definitely recommend you go ahead and identify what's considered green one, green two, green three, and green four. Maybe you are gonna use white in your project and you need to determine what's your white one, white two, white three. Go ahead and create a legend. I just cut a little piece of the fabric and use my wonder clips to clip it to the top of my pattern. I'm not covering up the rest of the information, but it's my constant guide to let me know so I don't inadvertently mess these up because then my picture is going to come out maybe differently than I had expected. So looking at Cindy's pattern here, she breaks that down into part one, two, three, and four, and all the way down to part nine. And as I mentioned, you're making those in that section first, and then the next section, and the next section, and then ultimately sewing them all together. As I mentioned before, you cut your tissue paper apart into your different, what she calls, parts. And I kind of have a stack of that. We found it helpful to go ahead and grab our green one, green two, green three, three and green four, and just cut that fabric for each part all, all at once. So for example, I have here, this is actually green four and my project, and I have that labeled number four. And I've got my stack of tissue paper here, starting with, of course, from number one, going all the way to number nine. And you might want to split those apart. So they're uh, tissue paper ones here, two there, three, four. And I'm just going to go to my actual pattern. And in part one, I've got green four here. I look for green four. If it's not there, I'm going to go on to the next section. Part two, green four is here. And the cut is two and a half by five. Now, on Cindy's pattern, she lets us know on the back how much we need of each fabric. For example, for green four, that's a quarter yard cut. What we found helpful is while a quarter yard cut is nine inches by 44, while we could cut up this length, it's to our specific measurement of two and a half by five. If we came up two and a half and over five, it can be some awkward cutting. We did find Cindy's measurements to be nice and generous. So with that in mind, and to make things easier and faster to cut out, we just went ahead and cut this direction and cut that full two and a half by, uh, in this instance, nine inches, because that's a quarter yard cut. And we just used the strip that way. So that's just something that just know if you want to follow that technique, will absolutely work and you have ample fabric to do that. Or you could be cutting the two and a half and over by the five and getting the exact same piece and kind of make this a bit of a, what I would call Swiss cheese. So that's up to you. Um, we definitely, as we were making the project, saved our leftover fabrics. So we will definitely be able to use those for another day. But this is just one way to potentially approach the project. Green four was two and a half. I'm just gonna come over here. I trimmed off my selvage, and I'm just gonna come over to two and a half inches, and I'm going to make my cut. Now, typically to make these cuts, I'm gonna be using the larger rotary cutter, and I save my 28 millimeter for when I'm doing that close-up work within the actual, on the tissue paper itself. So I'm gonna to switch to my larger rotary cutter. And in this instance, this is green, 
uh, green four for part two. I would put that on that and put that aside. And I began to kind of build the fabrics for that as I go. So I'll continue down. Green four on the next part, which is part three, is three and an eighth by five and three quarters. Here's another thing I wanted to mention to you. Cindy was again very generous with her fabric requirement. Thank you for that, Cindy. That we don't have to cut that precisely. You absolutely can and the project will work. Her measurements are right on. But that three and an eighth by five and three quarters, if you want to bump that up to, let's say we want to only cut halves and holes. Three and a half, four and a half, five, six, seven, which is what we did for this project. You have enough fabric in your kit to go ahead and do that. And if you're choosing fabrics from home and you use her fabric requirements on the back, you will have enough fabric to do it this way. So in this instance, three and an eighth, we're going to go ahead and cut three and a half and just again across all the way that nine. So I'm going to come across here. And there's my cut for the next one. So I know cuts that are seven eighths and five eighths and three eighths can confuse people. Um, don't worry, you don't have to do that, but of course you need to go at least that measurement or more. Go up to that next natural point. Instead of three and five eighths, you might wanna cut four. And we went and tested our kit to make sure that there was ample fabric, there absolutely was, and leftovers too. So you get the idea. You're gonna keep cutting this fabric for all of the parts that you need that, and you're gonna put that on that tissue paper. Let's assume that goes with that one, and we put that aside, and we keep going till that fabric is done. And then we bring out our next green and our next white or red or blue or whatever you're doing until you have all the pieces cut for all of the parts. Now, I've, we of course did that ahead of time, and we're gonna make one of these together on camera. We will be making, I've already done parts one, two, and three off camera, and we're gonna be making part four together. I've gone ahead and cut my pieces to those measurements or bigger, and I have my tissue paper. This will be very close up at this point, and you'll be seeing mostly my hands because I wanna be able to talk you through how to read the tissue paper instructions and how to manage the fabric. This is when we'll be using the add a quarter ruler and I'll be showing you just how fun it is to do foundation tissue paper piecing. So I have my part four, I have my diagram, my legends up here and my fabrics are right here. I went ahead and stacked them with my first fabric is green three, which is this one with the holly. That one's on the very top. My next fabric is green two. I stacked that one next. I went ahead and confirmed I had the right fabrics, double checked my measurements, and we are ready to go. Our pattern is guiding us that piece one is green three, and I'm gonna grab that now. Now I wanna point out that because this is a tissue paper, when I flip this over, I can still see uh, maybe a little bit different call on the camera here, but I can still see those numbers. They're just, of course, reversed because it's on the wrong side. You're always going to be starting off with looking at the lettering facing you so that you can read it. When we place pieces, they will be facing right side down. That doesn't feel natural to us and on the bottom side. It's a little bit like a, some backwards sewing. It doesn't feel quite right. But once you get this process down and you've done it once or twice, there's nothing to it. That's why I say once you start a foundation project, piecing project, just stay in it till you're done because it does take just a little bit of acclimation. And once you have it, you have it. Now, here's the lines of this particular section. Those are the solid lines. What that means is once that's sewn into my project, that's going to be the finished footprint of where that fabric appears. This dashed line down here is your seam allowance. You want to make sure that your fabric doesn't just come to that solid line and stop. 
but it goes to your seam allowance dash line at least that far. It can extend past that, but it must go at least to it. Similarly, I want to make sure that I have a natural, just a little bit of extra fabric beyond that point. Notice I have a little bit of fabric past this point here and a little bit of fabric past this point here. Right now, I'm satisfied that I have my piece of fabric where it needs to be. Now, one thing I'm going to recommend doing, this is not in your pattern instructions, is because I, it's critical that my primary piece, my starting piece, does not shift, everything else will be sewn based on that first piece. I'm going to go ahead with my sew line glue pen and just put a little bit of stripe of glue so this does not move. I do not want that to move. I don't recommend a liquid glue because it's going to potentially come to the other side and it could get quite messy. So that's our step one. Now, step two, our part two is green two. I'm always gonna go back to my pattern, confirming, actually part four, excuse me, part four, uh, piece number two is green two. So it's a two and three quarter by seven. I cut a three by seven that looks like that fabric. That's my fabric here. How do I get this on here? The line that separates these two of these, I'm gonna fold my tissue paper back toward myself on this line. So the fold is exactly along that line. So let's do that now. And you can kind of just peel it back till you see it. And you'll just fold all the way across. This is when the add a quarter ruler comes into play. So I'm gonna move these off to the side for now. And I will just kind of move this project just for the sake of where the camera is right now. And I'm gonna grab the add a quarter ruler. Now I wanna show you the feature of this is there's a lip on this ruler. What that means is as I bring this in, it's going to lock. You see how that happened? I'm sliding this across, sliding this across until it naturally stopped because of the ridge of that tissue paper. Go ahead and brace that with your hand so it does not move. And we're just going to trim that fabric away. Go ahead and save that for another project for another day. And we will lay that piece back down like this. Now, this is when we're going to actually flip this over. I want to show you what this looks like on the back side. This piece needs to basically come into play and be able to cover this space up. How do you know where to position this? Well, you're going to place right sides together. I liked to go ahead and put that quarter inch right there and just kind of lay that back over top. Or if that's difficult to see, you can just visually kind of pretend that's your quarter inch seam allowance. And if that fabric covers the next shape, which is kind of a triangle here, you know that it's okay to be in that location. See that? Just like that. So I know this is acceptable. So I'm going to pinch this with my fingers so it does not move, does not shift. We're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew right along the solid line between these two units. I'm going to start out here, kind of in my seam allowance, versus starting right in that corner. I want to be, it's okay to start sewing and you really should start sewing a little bit before and continue all the way to the uh, after. So we'll get started with a standard quarter inch seam allowance. You do not need to shorten your stitch length if you're working with the tissue paper. It's so delicate, it will tear easily later when we wanna remove the paper. 
So we're going to sew directly on the line. Continue just a little bit past. And yes, we did sew just a little bit into this next section. The pattern talks about that and I'll talk you through that. We want to definitely stitch beyond our line versus butting right up to it. Because we always, as we come back through, we want to crisscross our lines to secure our pieces. Now we're going to go ahead and go over to our pressing mat and I'll show you how to press. As normal, I will set my seam and I'm gonna press away. And pressing is going to be very important in this. Do not use steam, do not use any liquid with this very delicate uh, tissue paper because it could literally fall apart. So I have the steam feature of my iron off. Uh, you might even want to just remove the water if you have an iron that tends to kind of steam on its own. I had a machine like that. It seemed like no matter what I do, it, it seemed just to touch. So let's double check here. We have fully covered our space. So let's move back over and move on to the next page, next part. So let's repeat some steps. We've done step uh, piece one piece two, and now to move on to piece three, just like we did before, and that's first off identifying that our pattern piece says three white one. Well, we used a blue instead of a white, and that is saying two and three eighths by six and a quarter. We went ahead and cut it two and a half by nine. I think we actually trimmed that down just so it was a little bit less for you to have to look at on camera, but you need to have at least that measurement. Of course, it can be bigger. Just like before, in order for me to put this piece on, I need to find the line between the two and fold the tissue pack toward me on that line. So let's find it. We're going to fold that. Let's double check that. I'm going to fold that just a little bit more right here. Okay, we'll move our fabric out of the way. Again, I'd normally just rotate this with the rotating mat because of the convenience. In this instance, because we want you to have a very good vantage point, I'm just gonna rotate the project myself and we'll be using our add a quarter again with our 28 millimeter rotary cutter. This seam allowance, just let that be there. That's natural that lip is going to lock right into that fold. Hold steady. We'll trim away our excess and put that to the side. Let's look at that. That looks correct. So let's get that fabric. Again, we're looking for a two and a half by about a six and a half. Let me just double check here. Yes, okay, this is my piece. So, I'm gonna flip this over. This is easier to see at home and in person. You, I can see the outline of this next block. My job is to make sure that I position this fabric. I can't position it here because look, I've left this exposed. I have to move this down to figure out where I need to be so when there's a quarter inch sewn and it flips, it's covered that space. And that's a good spot right there. I really like that spot. I'm gonna pinch that, hold that. You're always going to sew from the side that has the writing facing you. It's the right side up, as I would say. We'll sew a quarter inch again I'm going to start with here, just before, all the way through my solid line and end into the next section by, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch. 
When I come back, we're gonna to move to the next section. So I, I'm back now, and I went ahead and pressed that part. So let me just show you the back, what this looks like right now. Doesn't make sense, right? Well, it does make sense. We're, we're getting a methodology. We're getting, it's, this is just repetition. So what do we do? Our pattern will guide us into what's next. We've done one, piece two, piece three is done. Now where's four? I was expecting four to be out here, to be honest with you. And I see now it's over here, which is uh, piece four is green four. And I'm on part four, because that my pattern tells me that, which is my dark green. I think that is this one right here, yep. So what do we do in this instance? It's not different. One, two, and three. This line here, we're gonna fold back toward us. Now, how do I do that? Because I sewed past the line. This is when it's okay to tear that tissue paper back just a bit. And the pattern talks to you about that. It's okay to do that. Just be gentle with it, of course. I'm gonna peel that back until I have the solid line. And if necessary, tear because I sewed past this. I can't pull back to that line unless I do tear just a bit. And we're gonna create our crease. Let's see how we did. I did a really good job. Okay. Again, I would rotate my mat at this point, but because I want you to have a very good vantage point, I'm gonna rotate the project so you have the best view possible of the project right now. Not different, exact same process. We'll use our add a quarter till we feel it make contact with that lip and lock, hold in place. Put that aside. I'm gonna flip this over. This is the framework we're trying to cover right here, including this corner. You can't miss any of it. So if I'm here, while that may be a beam this point right now and appear to be okay, by the time I sew a quarter inch seam allowance and flip, it, I didn't cover my corner. I have to scoot down, adjust as necessary. Let me check it. That would absolutely work. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew my quarter inch and flip. And I'm gonna continue through this process until I have all seven sections completely filled up on the back. And then when I come back, I'll take you through how to trim up this particular part and then how to sew some parts together to complete the project. Here's what our unit looks like with all the pieces on it. Doesn't look natural, does it? Now, as I mentioned before, you have your dash lines and that's what you're going to trim. Now, one thing I, that I discovered as I was getting this prepared for video, Tammy made the sample and I was able to make certain components of the next tree that I'm doing with you now. One thing that I would encourage you to do is in the pattern, Cindy has us uh, stitch start and end a quarter inch beyond our line. One thing I noticed is around the perimeter where the seam allowance is, where the dash line is, the dash line, go ahead and stitch to that line, if not a little past that line, because you're going to be cutting on that dash line and you want those pieces together. Here's what I'm talking about. I went ahead and followed that quarter inch guidance. And on most places where there's a 90 degree abutment, it worked. It took me to my seam allowances. But on certain sections where I had a very acute angle, I don't have the fabric entirely stitched together right where my seam allowance is going to be around the perimeter. So just keep in mind that I would encourage you if I was making this again, I would 
on my interior intersections, I'm going just a little bit past, maybe that quarter, but not more. But on the outside where it's going to be touching my seam allowance and I'm going to be having my dash line, I'm going to go to my dash line and pass that just a bit. So everything is intact. Okay, so with that said, we're going to get our six and a half by 12 and a half creative grids, our larger uh, rotary cutter. I definitely want to get my glasses and make sure I cut on this line. And you're just going to make those cuts and you'll cut your shape out on the dash lines. This is when the the spinning mat is so, so helpful. I don't have to disturb my project. I can just rotate that. Now I should have positioned it better to start with so it was where I didn't have to move it, but I'll move that now. We have a little section out here. Let's go cut that. And then one longer side over here. When I do things like this, I kind of just rock the ruler back so I don't disturb the project. It's not the end of the day if you would move this project, but some are so delicate, especially when you're trying to square up something that has bias. You don't really want to handle the project very much at all. I trimmed a little bit chunky on this side over here. Let's turn that. Trim again. I did. Okay, so this is this is what this part four looks like pieced. Now let me bring out the other parts I've done, one, two, and three, and we will show you how to begin to assemble your tree. So let's look back at the pattern. Notice how Cindy has us put part two and three together, four and five, six and seven. One is not going to come into play yet. You're going to sew two to three together and then one will come on top of that. So let's, let's determine which is which. That's part one. We'll put that aside for now. We'll be using uh, two and three. Okay, four, which is what we did together today, will go aside for now. Once we get part five done, we would go ahead off camera and of course finish up our project and finish up these sections. But let's look at this. I'm definitely referring to her picture to determine. So this is my part three. And you can see it's got that same shape here in part two. It's got that little notch in the corner. Now, if someone told you to sew these together your natural instinct would be, of course, that point goes to this point. Look how precise it is. Let's just enjoy this moment, actually, of precision because we put a lot of pieces together, trimmed and folded and ironed, and look how they fit just like a puzzle piece. That's the beauty of foundation paper piecing. This is not, though, as much as that looks right and would seem right, if you kind of look at that from that Christmas tree is not going to be quite right. Instead, slide that up until this line here that forms the Christmas tree is all in one continuous line. Now we're going to be using our patchwork pins because how do we now do this? You can just rock that over and I'm looking for that place. I'm finding that and there's all the seams are moving in this direction. There's a lot of bulk right here so it's not gonna you're not going to have interlocking seams. There's just not a way around that with this type of a project. We love our interlocking seams but that's not gonna happen this time. So one thing that you can do we know that's our intersection right there, right? We can see it. We can feel that. The dash, or that solid line right there. Right there, I'm in that spot. And I can poke my pin through to that spot. OK, 
Okay, now I'm gonna line them up, kind of a wiggle of the pin, which kind of gets them stacked right on top of each other, just like this. And how, now I know one is stacked directly on top of the other. Now I'm just gonna hold this here. I'm gonna actually move my pin back and put this in position because I don't wanna put the pin out here. That means as I approach this, I'd have to remove the pin. By pinning on this side, it allows me to keep it in position. And I'm also gonna pin right up in here. I don't want that to move. And just pin a little bit right down in here. I just don't want things to shift as I come down this direction. Better back that out. I definitely do not sew over pins. I know some of you do. I am just not that brave. I'm always worried about damaging my machine, so I don't sew over pins. So I am away from my quarter inch. Now, I'm gonna take that to the sewing machine. I have a drawn line. I'm gonna sew my quarter inch seam allowance. And when I come back, let's see how I did. So I have the two halves, those two sections, I should say, sewn together. At this point, I would press those seams open. When there's not, there's so much bulk on both sides of that, the natural thing at that point is just to be open because you can imagine pushing all of those seams to just one side or the other is just a, too much bulk. And so we would press these open at this point. Let's do that real quick and have a look at what we've got. Have to be delicate. One of the things I love about using the tissue paper uh, versus the other foundation piecing that I had did, which was with, um, it was with a white paper with drawn lines, I could not see through my paper to see my fabric. What I think is so clever about what you've done here, Cindy, is the tissue paper makes me be able to see my fabric and I have the confidence to know it's still there when I take it to the sewing machine and it's still in position. So look how nice that section came out. And again, you're just gonna continue on with four or five, six and seven, sewing those together. The bottom portion with the tree skirt is pieced just the same following Cindy's excellent instructions in here. The measurements are right on the mark. And again, thank you, Cindy, for giving us two shots at this. We can make one to keep and one to give. Um, she has instructions, of course, in there for finishing up your inner borders and your outer border. But the main thing I wanted to teach you here was don't be afraid of doing foundation piecing. It's a lot of fun. It's just wrapping your brain around it. Hopefully I demystified that and hopefully simplified that for you today. So I'm excited to see you for the next project. For now, I'm gonna go off camera, finish our quilt, and I'll see you for our next video.